Have you ever dreamed of being a ball joint specialist or a front end specialist for pickup trucks? Well, if so, get a third generation Dodge pickup, especially four wheel drive. And soon, my friend, you will be a specialist in the ways of front ends. <laughs> Okay, folks, um, I'm going to try to make this video as fast as I can, but if you have a third generation Dodge truck, you either know you need to learn how to fix your front end or you're going to learn very soon. Um, of course, I have a 2003 one ton dually four wheel drive and I'm getting ready to undertake a big job rebuilding the front end. My truck's got 330,000 miles and what the previous owner has told me, nothing has ever been replaced. So I'm doing ball joints upper and lower, front hub assemblies, and U joints. I'm doing the whole, um, like the center link, tie rod ends, everything pretty much on the front end, brake pads. I mean, I've got a huge job ahead of me. So what I thought I would do is make a video really quick of the parts that I've purchased, how much they cost, and the tools that I have set aside that I'm, I've researched. I know I'm going to need to do this job. So I thought I'd show you guys. So first off, the biggest problem with the Dodge trucks as far as front end wise is the ball joints upper and lower well let's go with all the the most popular ball joints out there you've got Carly which is you know top tier the probably the best that you can buy then you have Dynatrack uh, they're they're rebuildable I've read a lot of great things with them uh, but unlike Carly Carly has excellent customer service and that's what really, I think, um, causes a lot of people to spend the money on Carly. Now you've got Dynatrack, they're $650, uh, they're rebuildable, and I've heard their customer service sucks, but their product is good. So, then you've got a company like what I have here called XRF. This is a $200 set of ball joints. I've read a lot of good things about it. You know, odd and people have kind of had um, mixed feelings about XRF. But from what I've read and researched, this is a damn good ball joint, and it's better than what you can usually buy at your parts store, like, uh, you know, AutoZone, stuff like that. So, I went with XRF just because I read good things about it, and it was a little bit more obtainable. Then you've got stuff, parts like Moog. Um, it's not a bad product, but Moog is usually what you find in, like, O'Reilly's, AutoZone, Advanced, and I just, it all possible... I try not to buy serious parts from those stores. The parts may be good, but I've just not had good experience with any of those parts stores. So I just I just don't buy anything that they pretty much deal with. I'm not saying it's bad, it's just me personally. I've had bad experiences and I'd rather not deal with their shit. So uh, also, and then you've got Mopar. Those are the main ones that I've found that people have usually been going with. And you can never go wrong with a factory part other than it probably have factory dealer costs and it's kind of pricey. Yeah, let's look at the ball joint. Now these right here are going to be the lower ball joints. I didn't see an issue with these. Now what they did when I was looking on the XRF stuff, you've got two types of ball joints. You've got like the smooth sided ball joint and you've got what they call the knurled, I believe. And it looks like their upper ball joints are knurled. Now if you see, you might not be able to see it, but if you can, if you look Shit, let's just open it up. Okay, now here is the upper ball joint that I've taken out. And if you look on the the edge of a quarter or a coin and you see those little lines, that's what they call, or I call, like a knurled edge. Now the upper upper ball joints that they sent me have that same knurled edge. And if I'm not mistaken, um, once you use a ball joint with this kind of edge, you can't go back to using the regular smooth sided ball joint. You have to keep using the knurled edge ball joint. Now, I may be mistaken, so guys and girls don't get too butt hurt if I'm wrong, but if you would, please correct me in the comments below, but I do believe that is the knurled ed edge ball joint. And maybe that's the only kind that KRF has. I'm not for sure. I haven't researched that bit of information, but if you plan on using KRF, uh, please note that once you use this kind of ball joint, you might have to keep using that same ball joint with that edge. So let me get the, the lowers out and I'll show you what the smooth looks like. Now here's the lower ball joint. Now if you look, it's smooth. 
okay? So, if you would, before you attempt this job, do your own research, just in case I may be mistaken. But uh, I do believe if you get a ball joint that has that knurled edge, you have to keep using that same type of ball joint. So, just want to put that out there so you guys would know. The other thing I'm going to replace on my truck is the front hub units on both sides. Now, I bought these parts from Napa because I really couldn't find any information on the internet that pointed out a specific uh, hub assembly to get. So I went ahead and got the premium uh, hub assemblies from Napa. I think these and my U-joints, of course, I, I'm a member of a, I guess you call it like a discount club through Napa. It's a American International Truck Drivers Association or something like that, and I get fairly good discounts on big parts. So that's cool. So I got the hubs and the U-joints for $300. $75. I think Advanced Auto Parts wanted almost $590 just for the hub assembly. So that was cool. And I also got a Ray Bess's track bar um, shit. Bushing. This is probably one of the main overlooked parts of any four wheel drive, really, is your track bar bushing. So I got that. I'm going to replace that. And like I said, I've got the premium Napa U joints. Now, I want the Spicer Life. I think it's what it's called, Spicer Life U-joint. It doesn't have the grease fitting in it. It's a whole lot stronger unit. But there was like a two-week wait period. They had to order these and they were back stock. So I just got the premium with the grease fitting. I said, hey, what the hell, biggest thing I'll probably haul is a boat. So I have no plans on doing a gooseneck trailer with a bulldozer or nothing like that. So hey, I figured these would be just as good. And I think these were $35 a piece. So here's my front end assembly. Now this is the, the tie rod ends, you know, the center link and all that stuff. And, you know, it's got a new steering stabilizer, a new pitman arm. I purchased these on the internet, on eBay. And I would recommend all you Dodge truck owner guys, if you need parts, go to eBay and look up uh, Steve White Motors. They have an eBay store. And here is the invoice. You know, I got this whole one-piece unit from a dealer for $409 without shipping. And I called my local Dodge dealer, and they went $650 for this. So, Steve White Motors, they're on eBay. They're located in Newton, North Carolina, and they've got damn good prices dealer on dealer parts. And what this is, this is the latest and greatest updated, uh, I just call it a front-end assembly for the heavy Dodge trucks. This is like version 10.1 or something like that. I don't know if I can find it on here. Uh, it didn't give me a main number, but anyway, you get the point. You can find it on their eBay store. I'll have a link below, so check them out. Okay, so the first thing I got together is you need a good jack. I've got a 5-ton floor jack as a backup, but I've got a 12-ton bottle jack and two 6-ton uh, jack stands. I got them from Tractor Supply. They're like $38 a piece. So you got to have that. Next thing is, let's go over the chemicals that I've got. Now, the PB Blaster, this is the number one uh, penetrant out there. I just strongly believe in this stuff. This stuff is great. And what I've done, see it's been a week, a week and a half, I've crawled up underneath my truck and I've sprayed every nut and bolt that I know I'm going to be undoing with PB Blaster. I'm soaking it good and just, just letting it, I guess you could say, marinate <laughs> for a good little time. That way when I start this job, hopefully it won't be such a bitch. I got a can of WD-40 just in case you need some anti-seize. Now, your wheel hubs are going to be a bitch to get off. Pretty much everything in that front end of that truck is going to be a bitch to get off. So when you put it back together, in case you have to take it apart again, or just common courtesy for the next mechanic, you want to put plenty of anti-seize on all the crucial parts like the hub, when it slides into the axle, uh, just odd and in places it gets stuck, you'll know when you go taking it apart. You may need, I got this as a just in case, you need a small torch. You need to get you a torque wrench that is capable of going up to 250 foot pounds. You need your odd and in sockets. You've got SAE and you've got your metric. You've got your ratchets. You need a five millimeter Allen socket. Now here is the new hub. And the reason why you need that five millimeter Allen socket is so you can take this out right here 
and remove that, uh, I believe that's an ABS sensor wire. You need a short half inch um, extension. Now if you can't beat off your wheel hubs, you will have to use this extension in the socket and use just the actual steering of the truck to pop your hub free. Now you need one socket. Now this socket right here is 1 and 11 sixteenths. It is for your wheel nut. And so this is very important. You have to have that. You need a big fucking hammer. Uh, get you a two pound sledge or something like that. My sledge is actually missing at the moment. So I got this one and a half pound hammer. You need some pickle forks. And this right here, you're going to use this to separate the ball joint. Also, if you have a good air compressor, make sure you have a good impact. And you have, well, you don't have to have it, but I like using an air hammer on big jobs like this. The most important tool that you're going to need to do this job is a ball joint press. Now, I don't have one of these on hand. Uh, they're fairly expensive, and I just plan on renting one from my local auto parts store. Now, be aware, some of these auto parts stores have very, very cheap rental tools, and these ball joint presses could possibly bend on you if you use them improperly. Also, another reason to have the anises, the threads on the ball, ball joint press, you need to make sure that you use some type of anises or a lubricant because they will bind up on you because there's so much friction and force uh, used to press out these ball joints. So remember that. And you need you a good Chilton's manual because you do need to have all the proper torque specs for the front end. And a little extra thing that I got here is if you've seen any of my videos, I always like to clean and paint everything that I work on when I'm finished because I just like to have a nice complete job. So the wheel hub and part of the axle and all of the stuff looks ugly. I'm going to clean it and give it a good fresh coat of paint. So, uh, YouTubers, if you would, if this video has helped you out any, please like and subscribe. Drop in and say, hey, uh, if you have any comments or suggestions or anything like that, please leave them in the comments. And if you also have friends uh, that have three-quarter ton or one-ton Dodge trucks that are getting ready to do this job, please forward it. Um, just so you know, I probably won't be getting to this job for another week, maybe a week and a half, depending on the weather. Right now, I've got four days of rain, and I don't have a garage, and... Uh, so I'm kind of held up. So anyway, boys and girls, I appreciate you watching the video and I appreciate you guys subscribing. And uh, yeah, so I think that's about it. Thanks for your 30. So I'll see you guys later.